Good afternoon, everyone. Let us start. Remember, we have been learning chapter nine, planning and sustainable development. Yesterday, we discussed about concept of sustainable development. Today, we shall discuss a case study about sustainable development. Let me present. So it is about Indira Gandhi Canal Command area. This is an example, a case study of sustainable development uh, project. And this map shows uh, Indira Gandhi Canal Command area. Okay, see here at the confluence of Bias and the Salus River. A barrier is constructed and from here Indira Gandhi Canal is laid, constructed. So this is the photograph of Indira Gandhi Canal and this is another photograph. Okay, here uh, we have uh, more photographs, the color one, okay. So this is a photograph of Indira Gandhi Canal. This is another one. So let us start. So case study on Indira Gandhi Canal Command Area. Let us read. Indira Gandhi Canal, previously known as Rajasthan Canal, is one of the largest canal system in India. Indira Gandhi Canal was previously known as Rajasthan Canal and it is one of the largest canal systems in India. Uh, it was conceived by Kanwar Sain in the year 1948 and uh, the canal project was launched on 31 March 1958. As you have seen earlier, the canal originates at Haraik Berries in Punjab and thus run the uh, runs parallel to Pakistan border at an average distance of 40 kilometers in Thar Desert Marustali that is the western part of Rajasthan okay so the canal originates at Haraik Berries in Punjab and it runs parallel to Pakistan border at an average distance of 40 kilometers in Thar Desert. So now let us see a photograph of it. Uh, see here. Okay, see here. So here, this is the confluence of the two river, Bias and Salus. And here on one side we have uh, these Haraik Patan berries, and uh, on this side we have Haraik berries. And from here, from here, Indira Gandhi Canal is started. Okay, water is taken here. Okay, so this is the origin of the uh, this Indira Gandhi Canal. And see here. Here we have the these uh, Haraik berries in Punjab. And from here Indira Gandhi Canal is constructed. And it, it runs, okay, parallel to the Pakistani border in this way. Just in the western part of uh, Rajasthan. And the total plan length of the system is 9060 km, catering to the needs of uh, a total cultural command area of 19.63 lakh hectares. So the total length of the the total plan length of the canal system is 9060 km uh, and uh, it will irrigate uh, about 19.63 lakh hectares of land and out of the total command area about 
seventy percent was envisaged to be irrigated by the flow system, and the rest by uh, this uh, leaf system. Okay, flow system here means uh, this uh, this flowing of the canal water uh, by gravity. Okay, this it refers to the natural flow of the canal water. Natural flow here means flowing of water by gravity. And the rest is lip system. That means water is uh, lipped at uh, using pump sets or uh, these uh, source pools. Okay. And the construction work of the canal system uh, has been carried out uh, two stages. Okay. The construction work of the canal system has been carried out in uh, two stages. Uh, the command area of stage one lies in uh, this uh, lies in Ganganagar, Hanumangar, and northern part of Bikaner districts, and uh, it has undulating topography. And its culturable command area is 5.53 lakh hectares. Okay, stage one will command okay will irrigate 5.53 uh, lakh hectares of land and this area has a undulating gently undulating topography means not uniform not smooth okay ups and downs are there ground is rolling and stage one covers ganganagar Hanum uh, hanumangar and northern part of bikana okay so you may see uh, this uh, map also okay uh, so here uh, this stage one here yeah, this area okay uh, stage one see just see the index okay just see the index uh, this is uh, for the stage one and just compare and uh, the gray one and dark gray one is uh, for the stage two and the command area of stage two is spread uh, over Bikaner, Jaisalmer, Bamar, Zodapur, Nagaur, and Churu districts covering cultural command area of 14.10 lakh hectares. Okay, so stage 2 command area covers Bikaner, Jaisalmer, Bamar, Zodapur, Nagaur, and Churu districts. And it commands 14.10 lakh hectares of land and it comprises uh, this stage 2 okay stage 2 command area comprises desert land uh, dotted with shifting sand dunes means heaps of sands okay which is shifting uh, frequently and uh, temperature soaring up to uh, this 50 degrees Celsius in summer. So this is the environmental condition of this stage two command area. And in the lip canal, in the lip canal method, okay, in the lip canal, the water is lifted up to make it flow. against the slope of the land okay just to make the water flow uh, the water is uplifted okay using uh, these uh, pump sets and that is what we call uh, this lip system so let me repeat uh, in the lip canal in the lip canal system the water is lifted up using pump sets to make it uh, to flow against the slope of the uh, this land okay and all the lip canals of Indira Gandhi canal system originates at the left bank of the main canal while all the canals on the right bank of the main canal are flow channels okay all the lip Canals of the Indira Gandhi Canal system originate at the left bank of the main canal and all the canals on the right bank of the main canal are the uh, these uh, flow channels, this uh, flow system. Okay, so you may uh, observe 
uh, this map again okay see here this is this is for the flow okay okay this is for the uh, flow and this one is uh, for, for the flow okay uh, see and again you have to see uh, this map very carefully uh, so this is the canal and here it is flowing in this way so here uh, this right bank uh, one okay see so this side here this area is under the uh, flow system and here for example this area is under the lip system this is for this stage one and uh, here this area okay this area dark gray areas under the uh, this uh, lip system and here this area is under the uh, flow system any question from your side boys and girls Okay, let us continue so irrigation so we have been discussing about the uh, these uh, dimensions okay about the structure characteristics of the Indira Gandhi canal so dimension what is the length of the canal how much area is uh, irrigated when it was conceived okay so what are the divisions what are the systems so we have been learning about it and see Irrigation in stage 1, command area of canal was introduced in early 1960s, whereas command area of stage 2 began receiving irrigation in uh, this mid-1980s. Okay, stage 1 irrigation system was started early 1960s, and stage 2 command area uh, irrigation was started in the middle of 1980s okay so from here again from here uh, say from this line onwards uh, these uh, areas this line from this line onwards we shall discuss about the uh, this contribution then achievement of the Indira Gandhi canal uh, command area okay so now let us uh, ex uh, say examine the achievements or the contribution of uh, Indira Gandhi Canal project. And so this section is very important. Okay, from here up to this, up to here. Okay, this last uh, two big paragraphs here, very important for the uh, examination. So let us read. Uh, the introduction of canal irrigation in this dry lane has transformed its ecology, economy, and society. So with the introduction of the canal irrigation uh, in uh, these dry lanes of Rajasthan, okay, has transformed the ecology, the economy, and the society of the state. So it tells the uh, achievement or the contribution of the uh, project and it has influenced okay it has influenced the environmental conditions of the region both positively as well as negatively the indira gandhi canal uh, system has influenced the environmental condition of the region okay uh, both positively as well as negatively and so what are the these uh, positive uh, influences okay let us see contributions okay the good ones here the availability of soil moisture for a longer period of time and various appreciation and uh, faster development programs under command area development uh, have uh, resulted in greening the land 
and this has also helped in reducing the wind erosion and the siltation of the canal system so this is about the contribution about the achievement okay uh, this uh, say because of the canal irrigation uh, this uh, water is available okay uh, water for the soil is available for a longer period of time and because of the various afforestation programs because of tree plantation programs and uh, grassland development programs under the common area development okay resulted in the greening of the land once it was a desert because of the plantation of trees because of development of grasslands this region has become a, a greenery field not only this, uh, okay, this canal has also helped in reducing the wind erosion. Means uh, because of plantation of trees and uh, these grasslands, wind erosion is reduced and the siltation in the canal system. Means uh, when there is wind, then the wind will carry uh, the sand and will throw into the canal. Once trees are grown, then grasses are grown, then wind erosion is sack and a hand siltation means deposition of sand in the canal is uh, sack. Uh, but uh, we have uh, these uh, uh, negative consequences also there, okay, see here. Uh, intensive irrigation and excessive use of water has led to the emergence of twin environmental problems of water logging and soil salinity. So because of this excessive irrigation, we have got two important uh, these uh, environmental problems, okay? Uh, that is water logging and uh, uh, soil salinity. This is because of excessive irrigation. And next, Introduction of canal irrigation has brought about a perceptible transformation in the agricultural economy of the region. So this is another achievement contribution, okay. Introduction of canal irrigation has brought about a perceptible, a visible transformation in the agricultural economy of the region. As a soil moisture has been a limiting factor uh, for successful growing of crops in the area. Actually, uh, there was a time when water was not available, okay, soil moisture was not enough to grow the crops. But with the spread of canal irrigation, uh, this uh, spread of canal irrigation has led to increase in the cultivated area and intensity of cropping. Because of the canal irrigation, this uh, cultivated area has been increasing and intensity of cropping has been increasing. That is, number of times crops are grown in the year has been increasing. So from the single cropping to uh, double cropping, multiple cropping, or a triple cropping, for example. That means intensity of the cropping has been increased because of canal irrigation. And traditional crops has uh, grown in the area, okay. Traditional crops grown, sown in the area like gram, bajra, jawar have been replaced by wheat, groundnut, and the rice. So because of the canal irrigation, cropping pattern has been changed. Okay, once gram, bajra, jawar was grown, now it is replaced by wheat, cotton, groundnut, and rice. Okay, water intensive, for example, what a rice is grown here. This is a water intensive crop but it can be grown here using canal irrigation. And all this is the result of intensive irrigation. We can grow rice, wheat, groundnut, cotton in this area only because of canal irrigation. And this intensive irrigation no doubt initially, initially has led to a uh, tremendous increase in the agricultural and the livestock productivity. So initially, okay, uh, in the beginning, uh, this canal irrigation uh, uh, led to tremendous increase in the agricultural and livestock productivity. But this canal irrigation has also caused that twin environmental problems of this water logging and uh, this uh, soil salinity and thus in the long run it hampers the sustainability of agriculture. Okay, see here in the canal irrigation see 
uh, let us say here this is the canal okay cross section of the uh, canal and the water is here water is flowing here and here here we have the agricultural lane is here okay and see uh, here actually uh, here at the bottom it is not lined properly by concrete uh, cement so here water is infiltrated water is absorbed can okay, water is absorbed and it is okay it is carried transferred okay yeah it rises here it is absorbed and it is uh, okay flowing in the uh, it is the water is moving in the soil due to uh, capillary action and uh, it is rising on the surface and uh, hence this area becomes a waterlogged area and likewise here also water is absorbed and it rises above the surface due to the uh, capillary action okay and so it becomes a waterlogged area and when the water rises from the underground so the soil uh, see the same uh, sorry the salt that is found in the same that is present in the same is also dissolved and will carry upwards and it is again deposited on the surface and hence the soil becomes saline okay on the one hand it, it becomes uh, waterlogged and as well as on the other also see the soils uh, that contain salt and uh, this salt is again dissolved by the water which is rising upward and it is deposited on the surface and when it is dried up because of evaporation process okay you will find crystals of salt on the soil so in this way, uh, the because of canal irrigation, uh, this water logging and soil salinity uh, have been uh, occurring, and because of these uh, twin environmental problems, okay, that is water logging and soil salinity, uh, say uh, this uh, twin problem hampers the sustainability of agriculture in the this canal command area and that is why uh, say uh, some measures okay for promotion of sustainable development uh, have been adopted okay have been chalked out and uh, what are those uh, these uh, measures for the promotion of sustainable development let us read the ecological sustainability of uh, Indira Gandhi Canal project has been questioned by various scholars. Okay, so that means sustainability of Indira Gandhi Canal project has been questioned by various scholars means how far the canal uh, irrigation uh, is successful in transforming the, uh, the fragile uh, ecosystem of Rajasthan. Okay, or whether uh, these uh, problems okay whether the problems created by the canal irrigation uh, has been increasing day by day okay which so we have to compare and see here uh, here we have a uh, seven we have we have seven important uh, measures for the promotion of sustainable development in uh, this canal command area and out of these seven five uh, measures proposed to promote sustainable development in the command area are meant to restore ecological balance okay because of the uh, this canal irrigation uh, again, the ecosystem of the area has been disturbed due to water logging and uh, the soil salinity. So we have been trying to uh, say uh, bring a sustainable development in Rajasthan, okay, uh, by transforming the desert lane into a greenery field. And on the other hand, because of that uh, process, because of that activity, again the environment is are disturbed so let us read 
the first requirement is the strict implementation of a water management policy so number one measure number one step uh, uh, to be implemented here is strict implementation of water management policy the canal project in this is protective irrigation in stage one and the extensive uh, irrigation of crops and of pastures development in stage two okay the first requirement is strict implementation of water management policy water management policy must be implemented strictly and uh, the canal project envisages protective irrigation in stage one so what do you mean by protective irrigation so here the main objective of protective irrigation is to protect the crops from adverse effect of soil moisture deficiency which means that irrigation acts as a supplementary source of water over and above the rainfall okay to protect the crops from the adverse effect of soil moisture deficiency that is what we call protective irrigation and this protective irrigation is done in stage one and extensive irrigation of crop and pasture grassland is done in the stage two then uh, number two measure in general the cropping pattern uh, shall, not, shall not include water intensive crops then means uh, cultivation of rice for example shall not be done because uh, rice is water intensive uh, crop and it shall be adhered to and people shall be encouraged to grow plantation crops such as citrus fruit instead of growing uh, water intensive crops like rice uh, people shall be encouraged to grow plantation crops tree crops like citrus fruits okay oranges lemon for example must be done then measure number three the common area a development programs such as lining of water courses and development land development and the leveling and wariband system shall be effectively implemented to reduce the conveyance loss of water okay uh, to reduce the loss of water when we supply water in the field or to the canals okay lining of water courses must be done means uh, see here lining means here see here lining see here it must be cemented okay concrete cement bricks or this concrete cement lining of bricks and uh, concrete cement must be done to sack the infiltration then uh, land development and leveling must be done and a water bundy system water bundy system means equal distribution of canal water in the common area of outlet so all this must be effectively uh, implemented to reduce the conveyance loss of water then number four the areas affected by the uh, water logging and soil salinity shall be reclaimed the area which is uh, affected which are affected by water logging and uh, soil salinity must be reclaimed say for example uh, from the water log areas okay inundation canals small channels may be dug out to drain away uh, the uh, water or we may grow these perennial fast growing trees like a uh, eucalyptus okay and uh, this is what i call bio drainage so when the eucalyptus trees grow in that area then water uh, uh, the, in that area okay the log water in that area will be absorbed will be utilized okay and uh, soil salinity also can be replaced by applying chemicals like limestone and uh, so many others uh, these uh, techniques and methods are there to treat the soil salinity that must be done then uh, the eco development through Appreciation then uh, shelter belt plantation and uh, pasture development is necessary 
particularly in the fragile environment of stage 2. Okay, eco development plants uh, like afforestation programs, okay, plantation trees, then shelter bear plantation and uh, grassland development is necessary in the uh, this fragile environment of stage 2. In the this fragile environment means uh, that ecosystem is uh, ecological balance is disturbed. I think you have learned about the the shelter belt, and see here uh, we have to grow trees in rows. Okay, here like this. Uh, here, this is what you call uh, this shelter belt. Here we may grow another row of trees. So this is known as shelter belt. And this will attack the soil erosion. And number six, the social sustainability in the region can be achieved only if the land LOTs having poor economic background are provided adequate financial and institutional support for cultivation of land. Okay, this is about social sustainability not about uh, this uh, environmental uh, sustainability okay uh, so social sustainability in the region can be achieved only if the land LOTs having poor economic uh, background means poor farmers are provided with adequate financial and institutional support for cultivation of land that is uh, uh, loan facilities may be provided okay uh, cooperative societies may be established so, so that those steps can be taken up then the last one, the economic sustainability in the region uh, cannot be attained only through the development of agriculture and animal husbandry. The agricultural allied activities to have to develop along with other sectors of economy. Okay, so development of agriculture and animal husbandry cannot only uh, improve the life of the farmers in this area okay so agricultural and allied activities have to develop along with other sectors of economy and these shall lead to diversification of economic base and establishment of functional linkages between basic villages agro service centers and a market centers this also to be done I hear uh, this functional linkage between basic villages means uh, say for example nodal villages important villages okay uh, must be done then agro service centers must be uh, established and uh, marketing centers okay market centers must be established so agro service center Actually, this will enable small farmers uh, who cannot afford uh, bullocks or this uh, machinery or other farm machinery, okay, to hire uh, these services from the uh, poor farm operations. So these agro service centers will enable small farmers uh, who cannot afford bullocks or this farm machinery uh, to hire okay for farm operations so if it is done then the economic sustainability of the reason will be attained so these are the points we have to learn and these points are very important for the uh, CBC exams also uh, any question from your side boys and girls Okay then, let us stop here for today. Uh, please send your names for attendance in the WhatsApp group. Thank you very much. Okay, Tonga, how you are asking? Okay, leave and flow. Just wait. Okay, I have to read. Uh, leave and flow channel difference. Yes, leave and flow channel difference. Uh, actually, uh, for the if the level of the agricultural field is higher than the level of the canal okay we have to leave 
the water using pump set to provide water in the field and uh, for the flow channel actually when the canal is higher than the agriculture field then there will be natural flow of the water means flowing water uh, due to gravity will be there in case of flow channel flow channel here means flowing of water uh, due to gravity okay in case of leaf system water is to be lifted to provide water uh, to the field that means the level of the field is uh, higher in some cases uh, than the level of the water and that is why lifting is necessary okay tongo ho any other question okay then thank you very much for joining my class